Mike Farrell, Rivals.com here with one of my favorite receivers in this 2021 NFL draft. And I'll tell you why in a second. This is Tylen Wallace from Oklahoma State. So I've had him as my number five guy uh, at wide receiver. And you don't hear much about him for some reason. Obviously, the talk is, of course, of, of Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell and Rashad Bateman. And everybody seems to have a different fifth guy. Um, I think this guy could actually be fourth um, and, a, and a late first rounder. And I want you to, to, to just remember back to his 2018 season where he was just dominant. Do you remember anything about that season? Like what it was that allowed you to break through and, and sort of have those huge numbers, 1,491 yards, 12 TDs, 86 catches. What, what changed about your game? I think for me, uh, that was kind of my first time, you know, being starting actually. So starting and then uh, being, you know, just showing everybody what I can do. I think that was the first time for me to prove everybody and just show everybody like what I'm about. So I think that was a big thing for me. And uh, I think that was kind of the mindset I had going into that season. And then obviously 2019, a good year, 53 catches, 903 yards, eight touchdowns, but an injury. Um, mm -hmm. So tell me how the injury have sort of affected you um, and, and your rehab from the injury. What was the injury specifically and how many NFL teams have asked about it? Yeah, uh, uh, so it was uh, I tore my ACL and I so, so when the surgery was I had to repair my ACL and, and also repair my lateral meniscus and you know, obviously every single team asked about it, you know, they all want to know about that stuff. But um, as far as the rehab process goes, it, it was, it was kind of tough, you know, that cause right when I had to rehab, that's right when COVID hit. So we came home and we weren't, we weren't really supposed to go back to school for, and we were kind of just listening waiting to see when we needed to go back. So I was kind of just here at home rehabbing and just, you know, trying to, you know, just make sure everything was good. But uh, fortunately I had my brother by my side to, to help me through the rehab process. So that helped me out a lot. Yeah, and, and I'm going to get to the recruiting process in a little bit with you and your brother, Trace, and, um, you know, both being recruited and what it's like to be twins, not just brothers, but twins, um, being recruited at the same school. It's happened, obviously, Jason and, and, and Devin McCourty and, and many others through the years, and it's always intriguing to me. But I'm going to ask you a question a lot of people don't ask, I guess. Uh, what does it feel like to, to blow out your ACL? Man, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it, it's, you know, once I did it, I, you know, I figured – I never knew what it felt like, but I knew whatever, when I did it, I knew that didn't, that didn't feel right. I knew something was wrong. And, you know, they, you know, right when I got off the field, they told me, yeah, we think that's my, what it might've been. So, you know, it was tough, but uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to kind of go through it. You know, I think everything happens for a reason. It kind of set me up for success. You can still walk on it after, right? I mean, yeah, I think it, it depends on, on who you are really. I think they said it, it affects everybody differently. Like some guys, they say they, they tear their ACL and they, they play the rest of the season. I'm like, I have no idea how they do it, but I think it just depends on the person. And then some are carted off. Like it, it, it mm -hmm. depends, you know, obviously you had, there's three ligaments, you had the ACL and then the lateral, but I, I'm not a doctor, but you know, Joe Burrow just had all three shredded and, there's potential for nerve damage and all that stuff. So did they give you an idea of how long you're, you're supposed to come back? I mean, everybody looks to Adrian Peterson who came back in like eight months, but it's usually a year, right? Yeah. So like normally, like you could probably start, like you were saying, playing football around like eight months, but to feel totally normal, it take, they say it takes normally about a year. Now, did you, uh, did you have to come back for 2020, you think? For me, I, for me personally, I thought it was the best decision for me. I don't think I had to, but I think it, for my best interest, I think it was the best decision for sure. And you had 59 catches, 922 yards in a shortened season, six touchdowns. Um, you know, the film from 2018 to 2020 is very similar. Uh, average yards per catch, you know, rated in that 16 range. Um, did anybody say, you know, hey, you look a hundred percent back or, you know, or, or were there questions about, you know, Oh man, you've lost maybe half a step. I mean, do you hear any stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, early on, especially, um, you know, at the beginning of the season, my senior year, I, it took me a couple of games to feel back normal. So a lot of uh, people would ask me about that. Like, Hey, what, what do you think was going on in the first couple of games? They were telling me like I was slipping a little bit on my routes and, you know, it just didn't, you know, look like me. And I was telling them, yeah, obviously, it had been a while. I was trying to get back in the groove of things. It took me after the first couple of games of my senior year to feel back normal again. 
and there's a confidence thing too like i mean it's in your head right oh yeah that, and that, that was really the battle what it was right there like i think i've been through the rehab i was all good i was cleared to go the biggest part was just trying to get over it mentally like and trust it again now one of the things people don't give you enough credit for in my opinion is you're not the biggest receiver in the world you're not a six foot four 225 pound guy but physical receiver um and, and that kind of sets you apart i think you know most people think of oklahoma state or big 12 receivers as being you know spread guys catch run get down play another day but you run through people um where does that come from i mean has that always been the way you wanted to play yeah always i think <clears throat> i mean that brings back all the way to to peewee football i think I was always taught to play the game that way. And uh, especially, you know, just getting older and hearing, you know, how they say, you know, receivers are, you know, prima donnas and like just kind of what you were just describing. But, um, you know, I, I've never played the game that way and I, I don't think it should be played that way. So I, I've just always played it the way I was taught. Let's go back to recruiting. You chose Oklahoma State. You and your brother were both heavily recruited out of high school. Um, how does that process work? Because some schools probably wanted one of you and not the other. Um, or, you know, there's always the discussion you have to have with coaches that say, listen, we're a package deal. I mean, this is, we're not one scholarship, we're two scholarships. Um, how, how did that work out and why Oklahoma State? Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a big thing. I think early on in our career, that's what, or yeah, in our high school career, when we started getting offers, we wanted to be a package deal. We said that was something we wanted to do. So we had to make sure that, you know, uh, coaches knew that and realized that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think the the biggest thing for us was Oklahoma State was one of the first schools to offer me and him both together. And even though he ended up tearing his ACL junior senior year, you know, they still honored his scholarship and they say, you know, we still want him to come and still want him to play for us. So that was really the big, the big decision in that whole process. What's Mike Gundy like? I mean, people ask me all the time. I don't really know the man. Hmm. Man, he's, he's a really good guy. Uh, he really cares about the players more than anything. I mean, just being out there and hearing him at practice and, you know, just outside of in meeting rooms and everything, you know, he's a, I think that's the biggest misconception about people get about him is that, you know, he's just like this, some guy and nobody likes him. But I think uh, really he, I respect him a whole bunch. And I think he's really just for the players, if you ask me. Are you allowed to comment on the mullet? <laughs> I think I am now. I think I can now. Uh, for and me, that, it, it was when you were a, just a youngster. You weren't allowed to. Oh no! Yeah, I tried to, you know, stay away from that as much as I could. <laughs> um, so, teammate, Chuba Hubbard came back, and you know, I know you guys probably talk about, you know, not only football but the NFL draft and stuff like that. And and you know, your stock has stayed steady for the most part, and his has dropped. You know. Do you guys talk about that, like what, how that works and, and how do you get a feel for where your stock is from the NFL teams? Uh, for I think as far as figuring that stuff out, I think we kind of let it, you know, obviously handle itself. I think, you know, for us, I think for how I look at it, our job is to go play football, do what we're supposed to do. And then, you know, everybody else takes care of the rest of it. You know, we can't control all that other stuff, how people rate us, you know, obviously on our game and things like that. I think for me, I try to look at that as our job is to go play football and let everybody else take care of the rest. So where are you going to, I mean, you're back in, in Texas, I believe, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be watching with your family, uh, your brother. Um, what, first round, are you going to be nervous? Yeah, I'm going to be nervous. I think, you know, obviously, I, I'm, I think, I'm, I, like I was saying uh, in other pre interviews before, I was saying I'm trying to be, you know, kind of realistic with myself. Obviously, you know, I, I believe I'm a first-round talent. But um, from what I'm hearing and everything, I'm, I'm looking for a day two kind of kind of result. But um, I'm definitely going to be watching. Obviously, I'll be very nervous both days. So um, we're looking forward to it. Have you heard anybody, you know, any school, I mean, not schools, but in any, any NFL programs that, that have mentioned to you you know, hey, we may trade up in the late first round to get you or something like that. There are teams that are often trading into the late first round to get a guy that they're worried about losing in the second round. I've got you as a late first rounder, early second rounder. Um, do you get any feel from teams or do they all play it, you know, close to the best? Yeah, they they play it real close. I mean, there's really no telling. I haven't not one team has told me like round wise specific, specifically uh, where they would get me. They were just like, you know, some guys may be like, hey, yeah, you know, we really like you. We're going to come come after you. But, you know, you just uh, they've done a really good job of kind of hiding it, I guess. And did you grow up a fan of any NFL team? 
I did. So obviously me being from Fort Worth, I grew up a big Dallas fan. So I watched them all the time or used to. Okay. And they took CD last year, obviously, in the first round, and they need defensive help. So unlikely right. landing place for you there. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you think you'd fit? I mean, I, I don't want to say one team because that's just unfair, mm -hmm. but what type of offense uh, – and, and don't give me the I can fit in any offense and every scheme's fine with me and all that stuff. Because you can, but mm -hmm. you you know you look at NFL schemes and you're like, man, that one's built for me. Are there any teams that stand out? Um, you know, obviously I say this, but I think, you know, what receiver wouldn't say this? I'd obviously say uh, Kansas City offense, the way they do it. I mean, I think that's the most similar to how we ran things at Oklahoma State. But, um, you know, just uh, I think in that, play style or that type of offense where I would be the most successful for me just because that's the one I'm used to. You did an, a very emotional open letter to your brother in January. Um, I watched it. Everybody who watched it was, was moved by it. Um, how much of this draft is for him as well? Oh, you know, every, every step of the way is, you know, I try to do that for him as well. I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy, you know, like I was saying in other interviews before, I mean, it, we, this was our goal. This was both of our dreams, you know, and it, it's unfortunate that it got taken away from him, but, you know, I'm fortunate enough to keep playing and, uh, and I guess hold up the dream for both of us. What role is he going to play in Tylen Wallace Incorporated moving forward? I mean, is he going to be just your brother? Is he going to be an advisor? Is he going to be a manager? Is he going to be a marketing guy? Is he going to, is he going to mm -hmm. be involved? For sure. I think uh, as far as figuring out what specifically that his position would be is uh, still trying to figure that part out, but definitely plan on having him involved in any way that I can in the future. You got any bets with Tevin as to who goes first? <laughs> Man, it was crazy because he literally just asked me the other day. He was like, if you're what do you think? I was like, but if you ask me, I I I, I got to be real. I think Tevin's going first, man. He every from what I've hearing and seeing everything, and you know, um, obviously knowing him, uh, I think uh, if you ask me, he's going to go first. So let, let's go back to the Under Armour game, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the I think that's the first time I saw you. Did you go any any rivals camps? I should probably do that research. I I did one, I believe. What was that like? Like was it nerve wracking because you're you're going against everybody in the region? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for me at that time, I didn't, I really didn't think too much of it. I was kind of just really excited to be out there and just play. So at the time, I don't think I realized how, I guess, somewhat of a big deal it really was. But um, I, yeah, at the time, I think I was just out there just playing. And how was Under Armour, that experience? I mean, this is everybody in the nation. You're going against corners that you heard about, but never played against and all that stuff. How, how did that help you? Oh, I mean, yeah, just like you were saying, I mean, they're the guys you you hear about, they're on TV, you know, obviously hearing about them all over the country. And you're like, all right, yeah, I get that. You know, I'm here with them, you know, and a, I guess it was kind of both, you know, it was kind of nerve wracking, but it was also exciting at the same time, you know, you're going against the best, you know, all from everywhere. So uh, I, I guess it was really just a, 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 a blessed opportunity to be a part of. Who gave you the most trouble in the Big 12 as a defensive back? You're saying, okay, so see, I've got asked this almost every time too. So are we are we talking career-wise or just when? Let's just say, let's say both career-wise first. I say career-wise, I'd probably have to go with Jeff Gladney. I think he 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 was a pretty good player. I think I was a, I was kind of a sophomore, I think, when he was a senior or junior, whenever he came out. But I think uh going into that game, I didn't realize how good he was until looking back at it now. And then in one game. In one game, I got to give props. I'd say Trey Brown from OU. I think he he did really well um, is when against every matchup we go against, you know, where it's going at it. So I uh, got to give him his props. He did really good that game. And and tell me a little bit about what it's like to play against Trevon Morig. Um, you know, he's a guy that people like you, they don't they don't talk about a lot. Um, I, he's mm -hmm. a first round talent to me. I think he's going to land in the first round, but just not one of those big names that everybody's talking about. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, I think it's, I don't know. I think it's also, if you ask me, it's probably, you know, a conference thing as if you ask me, I think, you know, there's also, you know, a bunch of talent, obviously in the big 12. And I think a lot of people don't, or in the big 12 get slept on, I guess, you know, I, and I'm, I'm assuming it's just, you know, from past history or, um, you know, people think about the conference, whatever that is. But, um, you know, I think like I was telling you, I think we just, we can't do anything except go out there and play and let everybody else talk about it. So. And last one, who finished second for the uh, 
the Wallace twins back in recruiting? Who finished second? Oh, yeah. that's a good one. So it was it was kind of it was kind of close. I think for us, second was probably probably SMU. I think SMU was a good second. Do you often think? I mean, you had a great career at Oklahoma State. You loved it. You and your brother um, have different paths, but obviously this bond is inseparable. Do you do you ever wonder? You know what would have happened if I went to SMU, and and you know, like I wonder if recruits wonder that. Oh, all the time. I mean, me, me and him talk about all the time. We're like, dang, like, you know, we were looking at all the offers we had. We're like, you know, what if we would have went here? What if we went there? But, you know, it was just crazy because I, I don't think we could have made a better decision. I mean, I think, I think I've had, you know, an amazing career at Oklahoma State. And I don't know if I, if I would have went anywhere else, if it would have been the same. Who do you idolize as a wide receiver or not idolize, maybe emulate? Like you were saying, I think early on, I definitely – chose the model of my game after Des Bryant. You know, I was, grew up a huge fan, like I was saying, Dallas fan, and I was watching him when I was little. And just the way he attacks the football, high points of football, you know, I tried to model that in, into my game as much as I could. Three career rushing attempts, Tylen. Three. <laughs> 13 yards. One touchdown. Did they oh, yeah. ever talk about them and say, listen, man, give me the ball – Inside handoffs and stuff like that, I can do more than than just catch the ball. Oh, for sure. You know, they I think they they tried to throw me in a lot of different stuff. You know, use me as much as they could. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna let I let the uh, the running running the ball part to chew. But I just you know kind of kept my distance from that. Also impressed with uh, five career, seven career tackles, five solo tackles. So that's that's good. And he didn't get a lot of return action. Um, do you think you could do that in the NFL? For sure. I think I definitely could. I think that was something I, I did early on in my career um, at Oklahoma State, you know, was was OK at it. I think it, it kind of shook me as being a freshman, sophomore, trying to be out there catching punts at the college level. But, uh, you know, now, obviously, I think the nerves have definitely calmed down. And I think I could definitely do it in the NFL. All right. And give me one Mike Gundy story that's that will stick with you forever. <laughs> oh, man. One Mike Gundy story. Let's see. Um, it could be hair related. I, it could be eccentric related. He's, he's a different cat. I'd say I don't know if really a story, but it's just I think after games, especially after big wins, his his locker room dances are are something <laughs> are just something you have to see for yourself. It, I don't think funny. I've seen those. Have they been on video? Is it, can I YouTube that? Oh, oh there's some video. Sure, yeah, All you right, definitely got to look those up. I usually don't watch old men dance, but um, <laughs> I'm an old man, so I'm gonna watch it and see what happens. So. Definitely. Well, I, I appreciate your time. This is a busy week. This is an exciting week for you. Um, I I just think Baltimore, man. I'm feeling Baltimore. They traded back okay. in for a receiver. It's you or Terrace Marshall, and I just don't know which one they want, and that's my feeling. But we'll see. Uh, second round, if that happens, then that's still obviously better money than I make. So I appreciate <laughs> your time. And, and it, you've been great throughout the process um, and, and all that stuff. So you're a Rivals family member. We're going to root for you forever. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it.